This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined by Nancy Jo Sales, author of American Girls, Social Media, and the Secret Lives of Teenagers. Um, Nancy Jo, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's a powerful book. You interviewed 200 girls um, ages 13 to 19 across 10 states. You found such important and powerful things like? Uh, like the constancy of social media. Cyberbullying is still very much an issue in girls' lives. Uh, sexually explicit content, sharing of nude pictures. Uh, How not young? Well, I heard about this going on in sixth grade. This was from 13-year-olds. Uh, it's happening everywhere, all over the country, every sort of community. Across all socioeconomic. Yeah. Girls worse than boys? Well, I mean... Or different. Girls use social media more than boys do, and they seem to be the more the targets of abuses of social media, like sexual harassment, like cyberbullying. It's interesting. I told you that our son, uh, one of our sons who was 13, is on social media. And I'm trying to figure out, again, they don't, they don't talk to you about it, but do boys and girls post differently? Yes. How so, in general? Well, girls feel a pressure. They don't always give in to this pressure, but they feel a pressure from our culture to post provocative pictures, uh, you know, s sort of pictures in a kind of porn aesthetic where they're posing in certain ways and trying to convey, like, sexual appeal when, when they're very young. And it's, it's not uh, healthy for them. Studies show that what's called sexualization is very damaging to girls, but it's the culture of social media that this is what gets likes, this is what gets followers. Is that what they're looking for? Likes, followers, attention? That's what the rewards of social media are. That's sort of how it's set up. That's kind of what it is. It's a, a, a search for likes. How dangerous? I think it's uh, based on the reporting that I've done and talking to many experts in the field of, you know, of uh, education, and child psychology, and so forth. I think it's pretty clear that there's a lot about social media that is really hurtful and, and challenging, especially to girls. Both suicide. girls and boys. I'm sorry for interrupting. You came right before you came in. You said another yeah. suicide. Yesterday, there was a report of a suicide of a 14-year-old in Missouri. And this was off of, this was cyberbullying that happened on Facebook. So you see, it's not always some anonymous site. Sometimes it's very mainstream sites where, where these kind of abuses happen. Very high numbers of kids in the 80, 90 percentile range have witnessed some kind of cyberbullying. High numbers have experienced some kind of cyberbullying. You, you know, one of the quotes, one of the young ladies you talked to, social media, she said, social media is destroying our lives. You asked, why don't you go off? And she said, then I'd have no life. Yeah. This was one of the first things that was said to me in this reporting, and it kind of set the stage for the rest of what I would hear for two and a half years. Um, that is what they feel that, you know, a lot of them, there's this idea that girls just love social media and they just want to be on it all the time. They are on it a lot of the time. Nine to 11 hours, kids are on some kind of screen, but they don't always love it. They feel that it's very, they have very conflicted feelings about it, but they also, feel like if they're not involved in it, then they're not part of the conversation. They're not, they don't know what's going on. They don't know what people are talking about at lunch. Did you see the Snapchat story? Did you see what he, she posted on Instagram? It's, be, it's bled into real life. For those of us, for parents who are struggling and know that the iPhone or whatever it is, it's there, do we take the phones away? Do we monitor it? How can, what do we do? I think the first thing that we have to do is to recognize that there is a huge problem. You can't say, not my kid. You can't. It's the culture. It's the culture of social media. We have to recognize that it's addiction to a certain extent. I mean, it has all the hallmarks of addiction. You can't stop thinking about it. You can't stop doing it. Phones don't leave the hand. You know, kids get really upset, you know, like emotional when their phones are taken away. These are all like the hallmarks of an addicted person, you know, and, and studies, some studies do bear out that we're addicted to social media. I mean, the jury's kind of out. I feel it sometimes. Sure. I react to things I see on the internet. I react to things that people said about me on Twitter. 
I mean, I mean, intellectually, I realized, hey, wait a minute, what, a 14-year-old? Yeah, and also what studies do tell us that what we say and do from behind a screen is different from what we would do face-to-face. -face. We've evolved to communicate face-to-face. -face. Here we are communicating from behind screens. We're likely to be more aggressive, less ethical, and this, you know, these are... These are things that, you know, you really have to think about in terms of children coming up, coming of age, growing up, becoming a person, and, and learning to communicate in an environment which there's more impulsivity and, and possibly, uh, you know, kids saying and doing things they would never do if they had to actually deal with someone in person. Parents have to deal with this directly, talk about it. Absolutely. I mean, I think that there's not enough talk going on about it. I hope that with this book, I hope that... I talk about what you want. We've got a minute left. What do, you, what do you want to happen out of this? I wanted... I did the book because I wanted girls to be able to tell in their own voices what's going on. Because we were seeing reports of so many troubling things. And I wanted... It, the book is very much in the voices of girls ages 13 to 19. I wanted them to tell the story to a large extent. There are expert voices and there are people who comment on on this phenomenon. But really, I wanted girls to tell the story. And I wanted them to hear it because, I wanted, I wanted people to hear it because I want parents to know, because kids don't often offer this information. And knowing what they're going through, how they feel about it, how conflicted they are, I'm hoping that this information and this awareness can start a conversation between kids and parents. And frankly, schools have to do more too. Uh, Nancy Jo Sales, you have done an important public service in writing the book American Girls, Social Media, and the Secret Lives of Teenagers for All Parents. I want to thank you. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Hackensack University Medical Center Foundation, Investors Bank, Felician University, New Jersey Resources, the North Ward Center, and by Cone Resnick. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.